hello, Chris. Morning. <laughs> Very nice to see you. I'm just catching a few rays in between champagne sessions. I hope that's okay. That is not a problem, but I will need to drag you away because we need to get our first lesson underway. Aha, uh -huh. what are we learning today? A little bit about glassware, and most importantly, we're going to open the most alluring champagne in the world, Perigeuet Belle Epoque. Okay, well, if alluring is the name of the game, then I should probably get changed, and I'll see you at the bar. Sounds good. <laughs> So we're here at the very sleek bar at Yummigan and I'm ready for class. All right, let's talk about glass. <laughs> the three types we're going to look at, the coupe, the flute and the tulip. But your champagne that you're, you're pouring, so the house style and the type of champagne, should help determine what glass we're going to use. Right, so different glasses for different champagnes. That's correct. Okay. So the coupe, uh, not many are going to go into this glass. So it's a good looking glass, it's a feel good glass. It's very great Gatsby. Very, very <laughs> theme appropriate, yeah. but it's not a great glass for champagne. Right. Uh, it tends to warm up quite a lot, um, all the aromas blow off, and you end up slurping your champagne. So you're pulling it up, you're sucking it up, and you lose that line of acidity. So then we've got the flute. So more traditional style is the icon of, of champagne consumption. It's obviously nice, tall and slender, so you can see the bubble rise, but it doesn't really show off the complexity of the champagne. So then we move on to the shape that we're going to be taking on tour with us. This is the Paris Red Tulip. You can see it's got a little rounder belly, uh, so we can open up the champagne a little more. The rim is, is still angled in, so we're still trying to trap that aroma. So get your nose in there and really see what you're looking at. It shows off the complexity of the champagne, but keeping the freshness and the line of acidity nice and nice and linear on your tongue. Right, I mean, when you look at these three glasses together, I mean, to my student's novice eye, it kind of feels like the best of both worlds. It sort of traps the aromas really well, but still opens them up as yeah, well. Is correct. that right? Correct. So we're going to talk a little bit about pouring and opening in the coming classes. So I think the best thing to do now is just open some Belle Epoque. Sounds like a fabulous idea. This is Perigeuet's Belle Epoque. It's the, the icon of the Maison. It's a true representation of the floral, delicate, and the charm that our Maison is known for. Cheers. Cheers. Very clean, fresh, vibrant in the mouth. You can feel there's so much going on in the glass from those floral notes, that plum blossom, that orange blossom, little hawthorn to the citrus characters, that fruit. So I've seen candied apple, candy lemon, little lemon pie. Am I right in getting a little sort of melon kind of note in there as well? And I think that's the, that's the beauty of it. There's the softness of melon, softness of the floral notes. Yeah. And then the brightness of that, that candied acidity. And then we've got that, that lovely Perigeuet nougat just sits in there, nestles in there nicely. And that long, elegant, finish so clean, so fresh. So I'm very interested to know what the kitchen has in store for us today. I too am interested. Should we go and find out? Absolutely, let's go. Let's go. Thank you very much. Hello, Adam. Hello, thank, thank you. Thank you very much for having us here. You're very welcome. Welcome to Yomigan. Now, Adam, Chris and I were in the bar earlier talking about the beautiful characteristics of the Belle Epoque Champagne. What do you have planned to pair with it? Uh, so firstly, I was inspired by the bottle. It reminded me of springtime. And after tasting the champagne, the citrus and the floral fragrances come out. What I'm going to do today is a hue and salmon belly, a buri, which is seared with a spring garden. Lots of thought there. Now, talk to me about the hero of this dish. So the hero of this dish is definitely the hue and salmon belly. Firstly, just the company. They've been uh, farming in Tasmania since 1986. The fish are amazing. They're grown in pristine waters and they're in pens and not tanks. The, the whole company looks after the surrounding environment as well, which, which shows in their product. Our salmon comes in whole, direct from Huon. They harvest to order. We are assured of the freshest fish. We have Shintaro, our sushi master, who breaks down the fish for us. So Chris, what do you think? So I think texture is going to play a really important part. We've got crisp, we've got crunch, we've got pop, we've got smoothness. I think it's all going to work quite well and champagne needs that texture to, to bounce off. And then we move across to the belly. And I love the fact that you're using salmon, not tuna. Sometimes we're gonna find this, the minerality in the champagne rather than the protein, which is what happens with tuna. So I think salmon's a really great, really great protein to be using. Awesome, well complementary opposites, uh, lots of texture, lots of contrast going on. I think I'm sold. So should we head to the table and let the master get back to work? Yeah, let's get over there. Look at that. 
But here we have a human salmon belly, which is seared or buried. We have karasumi on it as well, but it's basically representing a spring garden. I love this dish. Initially, it's such a gorgeous thing, such a riot of colour. And, um, you know, just like you, multi-dimensional, lots of surprises, lots of layers to discover as you dig through the dish. And I think such a beautiful compliment when it comes to the champagne as well. It's a great pairing. What I like about this dish is every little bite you have is a little surprise. All those things you're finding in there, I'm finding in here. We talked about the complexity, we talked about the softness, the brightness of that apple acidity, the complexity, the depth of flavour, all the things you're speaking about in this dish. Um, and I love the way they, they marry themselves, or I should say, mirror themselves so well together. My thoughts at the end of the second leg of this Art of Tasting tour is that the Gold Coast is incredibly lucky to have you on your team. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to have you guys. You can only experience this dish here at QT Gold Coast at Yummigan, so you absolutely should because this pairing is perfect. Sunshine and salmon done. On to the nation's capital next. Cheers to that. Looking Cheers. forward Cheers. to the next leg. <laughs>